Hi Facebook friends, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this session, we are going to be talking about Darkroom Core. Very specifically, what we're going to be working on talking about is packages and templates. First, what are packages? A package is a container for a print item or multiple print items or a uh, share option like a uh, photo to phone or email, those type of things. Um, a package, a lot of people when they hear the term package or the word package, they think of like a, a studio package like three eight by tens, 48 wallets. Um, and it can work that way, but it can also be a single four by six or five by seven. So um, the, and where I see a lot of people get confused, uh, is with package groups. Um, you can kind of think of a package group as like the um, a group of packages. The way you have your breakfast menu at McDonald's, you have a group of one uh, package one, package two, package three, or uh, your egg McMuffin. But you can have a different group of products after breakfast, which would then be your Big Mac and those type of things. So you can have different groups of products available and inside each one of those is a e either a individual print item or multiple print items just like you would have your uh, number one which is a burger fries and a drink. That's kind of the basics of what a package is. One of the most common uh, mistakes that I see when I log in and look at somebody's computer is they'll have a group called 4x6 and that's the group name and then there's package 1 and they'll have a 4x6 added there. Um, what I would recommend and this is the way it should be set up is rather than having a 4x6 package group uh, name that um, event packages or my packages, something that's specific to that uh, that group, and this package would be four by six, and you can leave it as zero dollars and zero cents, or you can assign a price if you're paying, if you're charging per print, um, and we'll go ahead and disable that warning. So. Now, uh, this is a working package group. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set it as default. So now when I go to my photo library, I have a 4x6 package. I can also set up, uh, let me set up one more just so we can see how that is. The, so the group is called event packages. And I have one package there. I'm going to add another one. This one's going to be a 5x7 package. And um, what I'm going to do is click add local print item and add a single 5x7 print. And um, so now back in my photo library, I have two packages set up inside one package group. Uh, and I have the default package group that comes with the software, which is your standard packages. And there's a few different uh, options that there um, that you can look at. but. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to show you that you can add multiple items to that package group. So um, I'm going to uh, click add local print item and instead of a, a print uh, I'm going to add a digital delivery product and let's say every time I print a 4x6 I want it to save to Um, this folder on my desktop. So I can browse to that folder and um, there it is. So inside that one package I have two separate print items even though one of them is actually not a print. Whenever I click on that package, let me select that image, you can see that it's gonna um, add a 
digital delivery and a 4x6 print. So this right here brings me to another thing. I'm going to kind of jump off top it real, real quick because this is something that a lot of people don't know how to get past all those multiple steps to get this one print to go to a printer without having to click uh, five different times. So we're going to go into our preferences or into our setup tab again and go to general settings and right down here I'm going to uncheck the option to uh, prompt for copies for quick prints and uh, prompt for copies when adding packages to the cart. Another thing that I'm going to do is under workflow settings I'm going to make sure for all three workflows there's one two and three that I have fill package with current photo checked and add default package not checked. This, this is really just preference. Um, and second to last last thing I'm going to do is uh, let me show you what this uh, what that one is. If I click place order, it's then going to show me this receipt. I don't have to have that pop up every time. I can uncheck under receipt options, uncheck this option, and now it's going to uh, just bypass that receipt and not show it every time. And one more uh, thing I want to show you. Well, let, let's we'll switch back and then uh, we'll get back to that other thing in just a second. So we'll click uh, clear. Now four by six place order, and it's saying it can't be printed because I don't have a printer connected. That's fine. If there was a printer connected, it would start printing. Um, one other thing that I'm going to show you that will make that process even faster. We'll go back to our new packages that we're just creating. Um, I'm going to just uh, create a package that's uh, just saving an image. And I'm going to check this option right here, a quick print. And what that does is it bypasses the shopping cart completely. So now whenever I uh, click on a package, on this package, um, It's not even go into the shopping cart. It's going to go straight to that folder, and there it is. It's that fast. Um, so, and it's not just copying this image to that folder. Let me show you what's actually happening. So, if I go and select a green screen template, we haven't really gotten to templates yet, but just to give you an idea. Uh, let's go with this one. and crop in I'm gonna click show order and if I hit I'm gonna click on the number three rather than clicking on the package that number next to the package is actually telling me my on my keyboard I can click that number and it will print that package so let's see if we can scoot this over you can see just how quickly that happened um, I can go back to my photo library and select both images, click package three, and whoops, uh, it didn't apply the template because I was not in my photo workshop, but uh, try that one more time, click package three, select this one, package three, Oh, so in that case, why that didn't work is I'm using my uh, 10 key, which is being used for color correction. So that's another thing I wanted to show you in your uh, application options, general settings. Use numeric keypad for color co uh, controls. So let's try it now. Package three. There it goes. So if you notice that your 10 key, the, the keyboard on the right side um, is not saving or using the packages, you want to make sure that option is turned off. So I have my little list of things we want to cover. Preferences, and additional. Okay, so the next thing on the list is we're going to get into templates a little bit. And that's where we'll spend most of this uh, session in. 
I'm going to create a new template and um, the one question I get all the time is what's the best way to create and save uh, templates and graphics and what I would recommend is creating a, a new group and I'll call it my templates and then I'm going to create another group inside of that uh, this is going to be a subgroup um, okay demo and um, if we go into our X drive under templates we'll see that it created a templates folder or my templates folder and I am gonna create the subfolder just to uh, so it matches what we have in darkroom click demo and these are the graphics we're gonna be working with and I'm gonna copy those graphics into that folder and it seems like a lot of setup um, but there's a really good reason why and I'm about to show you um, if I create a, a new template we'll just call it uh, test we'll make it a 4 by 6 and say add a photo and add a graphic and let's see desktop so I'm adding a graphic from this folder on my desktop I'll save it as a new template and I'm going to save it in the correct location I want to save it under X templates borders my templates and then demo So it's saved in the correct location, but the graphic is in a different uh, is on my desktop. Now let's say I accidentally renamed this graphic folder. Um, I don't believe it's going to let me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this graphic that we just added out of that template or out of that folder, and that's where Darkroom is looking. If you open up the actual template file, you'll see that there's a path looking specifically in that folder so now that is no longer available I've cleaned up my desktop and it's gone uh, because your desktop is one of those places that you update and clean uh, or you should regularly so now when I open it up my graphics actually missing because it's not there and that can cause some problems not only is the graphic missing uh, and won't print but it can cause some other issues where you might get a ruby or a red or purple square there where there should be a graphic it's now missing um, so we're gonna go ahead and cancel that and I'm going to show you the right way to do this um, we'll delete that template and we're gonna create a new one we're gonna call it 4x6 um, logo I'm going to put vert at the end and there's a really good reason for that and I'll show you in just a moment um, click add photo and then add graphic browse we want to make sure that we're in the correct location adding it from a permanent location and the reason why the X drive is a good location um, because you can just always put it in directly in your C drive. If you put it on your desktop and you go to a new computer, um, that user folder might be different. So that's why I wouldn't suggest that the um, user folder. The C drive works. It's a pretty good permanent location. But whenever you copy over your, uh, let's say you get a new computer and you're copying over your, uh, your software, all you have to do now is copy that one um, photos folder, which your, which becomes your X drive. Um, you copy that folder, it has your templates, your packages, your photos, everything's encompassed in one folder and it makes that migration uh, quite a bit easier. So back to what we were working on. Um, there's our 4x6 vertical image with uh, a logo and we're going to click save as a new border, save it in the same location and I am going to um, 
just for fun, I'm gonna create another version. We're gonna go to uh, properties, change this to H-O-R-Z, and I think you're guessing what's happening. We're creating a vertical, uh, horizontal version. So we'll put this guy where it should be. We'll click on that one, fit and fill entire page, and then save as a new border. Okay, so um, now that we have those two templates saved, let's go ahead and go back to our uh, packages that we are using. I'm gonna delete this uh, digital media because we have it over here. But um, I'm gonna double click on that package and I'm gonna tell uh, the software, whenever I print that package, I want it to use, we'll, we'll just use the horizontal one. Um, so every time I, let's uh, go to sports, I click on this package, or the, um, yeah, the, this package, I can see it's adding that template right there. Now, what if I had a, a, a vertical image? Because we used the uh, that suffix of horizontal and vertical, um, the software knew that it's there's another template just like the one that I'm using right next to it with the same file name, and the only difference was the uh, V E R T R H O R Z at the end. It knew to choose uh, choose the correct. Uh, vertical template for the orientation so that um, that becomes real helpful that you can make multiple templates and the software can do a little bit of work for you rather than having to have a 4x6 vertical and a 4x6 horizontal package and each one having their own separate template so um, another thing that we'll want to look at is um, we'll create a um, I'm gonna create two more templates that are very similar to the one that we already created. Um, uh, this one's gonna be five by seven. There it is. And fit and fill entire page. Move that one to place. Save as a new border. And um, the uh, we'll create an eight by ten uh, as well. Oops, eight by ten, and the description becomes the file name. So that's why I'm always changing the description. Um, so that always matches rather than just changing that file name. Fit and fill an entire page. And as you can see, I'm opening the an existing template and editing that one and then saving it as a new copy. And what that allows is this graphic is always gonna be the same size, whether you get a four by six, a five by seven, eight by 10, the actual graphic will be continue to be the same size across the images. So that, that can be helpful. Um, we'll save it as a new border. What I wanted to show you next was the, um, we can clear this. And we'll select our four by six print. So right here we have a four by six image, and um, if we order an eight by ten of that, it's actually we can change the aspect ratio to C. Then it's going to cut off the logo. So you'll want to make if you're printing different aspect ratios, uh, you'll or uh, different sizes you'll want to make a template specifically for the aspect ratio. Otherwise, you might get some stuff cut off. Now, green screen, not so important because uh, you're just mainly talking about backgrounds. But once you start adding graphics and logos, you might want to uh, consider having different templates for aspect ratios. 
and so the common ones are going to be 4x5 or 8x10 and you always want to build the template based on the largest size you might print so um, 5x7 that would also work for 4x6 or for I'm sorry 5x7 would work for wallets and then there's 4x6 um, and the 3.5x5 which is not really a common size these days but uh, that's somewhere in between 4x6 5x7 so you might be able to get away with one of those um, so the uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, using templates as uh, guides or, or, or setups or layouts for um, less common sizes or specialty products so in this uh, scenario I'm gonna make a 4x6 vertical image um, with um, for magnets and you can either add one photo multiple times or I'm gonna do two by uh, three it's gonna have six two by twos on it um, and fixed aspect ratio of uh, it's gonna be square and no spaces and um, I'm going to check this option right here allow objects to overlap so what that says is I can put a graphic on top of the images if I had it set to skip then it would uh, skip those images and this might be helpful if you're doing composites like uh, 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 for a class and you have want to put the logo or um, a team name right in the center you don't want that name to go right over the composite photos um, so uh, skip works out well for that but for our situation right now we're going to set it to allow it to overlap and um, we're going to go ahead and get this all the way to a full 4 by 6 And because we know we have a little bit of bleed, it doesn't have to be exact because when it prints out, it's not going to be 100% exact. But what I'm going to do is I am going to set my uh, graphic. And what I'm talking about here is these little magnets. They're die cut magnets printed out of 4x6 and then cut into 2x2s uh, uh, two with rounded corners. Um, so if I go to my graphics, I have this little guide layer that I can put on top of it and I know approximately where it's going to cut um, based on that so I know not to put anything too close to the edge um, because, it, because it might be cut off. But the important thing is I don't want that to print. So I can go in right here and um, use this option display on screen but do not print so that lets me see it but I don't have to worry about it being on the image whenever I print it out so that's kind of helpful um, what did we call this uh, 4 by 6 6 up okay and the orientation here doesn't matter that's why I'm not adding it because they're square images and uh, Let's see. So I'm going to create a new catalog just so I can work with some of my own images. We'll click uh, add new photo catalog and we'll put it under event. Just call it demo. Finish. And just import a few, few images from there. Okay. So now I go to my photo workshop select my guide and we can make it a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing and I typically would recommend always leaving this set at auto your template is going to con uh, control how it um, the aspect ratio so here I can see um, if I were to use this image uh, it would cut off um, so I want to move it down just a little bit and I can still zoom in 
and I know approximately where it's gonna cut, same thing here, um, and I'm using my arrow keys. So I'm just ensuring that nothing important in the photo is lost, um, and I, uh, I might not be able to see that if I didn't have these guides that uh, it would look fine there, but then whenever it cut, I would lose it. Um, another example of this type of setup, just to kind of uh, get your creative juices flowing, I use um, I use darkroom to print images on uh, on canvas. Here, here's an example um, that I have yet to mount. Whenever I print it. I want to know that I'm not losing anything, but I also want to make sure that everything, that the edge of the actual canvas is covered on both sides and I'm not wasting any more ink than I need. So that's a 12 by 12. If I create a new document, and I'm using a 24 inch printer, so it's, uh, I'm going to do the math real quick and then I'll explain it. 15 by 24 and that size does not exist in here so um, what you can do is scroll up to the very top and use a custom size and I know 15 is going to be 4500 oops it's 7200 on the width that's the 24 inches across and it's 4,500. I've done the math already and wrote it down. I'm not that uh, good with numbers. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna add my photo and it's going to be a 15 by 15. That's 12 inches plus an inch and a half on each side in order to wrap. So the width and the height is 15 and I want it centered so I'm going to go ahead and click center center and then I'm going to add a graphic that I have in that graphics folder right here and now um, when I uh, save it as a new border and I can see I probably didn't do such a hot job in Photoshop whenever I created that graphic but um, I'm going to save it as a new border. And we'll use the line. And we'll rotate it. Now I can make sure that what I see is what I get and that I'm not losing any of that image. So templates can be used for uh, layout, for design. Um, th they're made to make your life easier. Um, one more small example of a, um, a good use of a template. You can print a five by seven, but I use eight inch paper on that printer back there. And um, so that means I'm printing on a five by eight and I'm getting a uh, one inch wasted so I can do uh, five by eight instead and we'll call it five by seven on five by eight and once again this will make a lot more sense it seems like a whole bunch of extra work um, go vertical add photo Whoops, I selected five by seven, didn't I? Yep, five by eight. Um, and then add photo. This should be set to five by seven. So now I can see the extra space, that extra paper area that would be wasted. What I can do is click add text. Um, and let's say put in, um, an order number and how about um, a file name or what about
copyright. Um, so now that wasted space is being used for order data or uh, rights protection. Um, it could also be used for um, advertisement or uh, have somebody Uh, you can add your website. So um, rather than just letting something go to waste, now you're actually using it and it's more valuable than it, uh, than it was if it was just blank. Just a small suggestion. Um, what do we got? What do we call this? Yeah, five by seven on five by eight. Save as a new template. I'm gonna show you that in, in action just so you can see how that, that works. Um, demo called it five by seven and five by eight and well I don't have a five by eight package but we'll click uh, place order and it's telling me I don't have a printer connected that's fine but when we go here I can see it has a, the order number the image number, the uh, copyright, my website, it's all kind of overlapping, but um, the uh, looks like, oh, the four by six also had, that's why it's showing up. The four by six has this print template attached to the package, so it's adding a template on top of uh, another template. So that's the reason for that. Um, one more small thing that I would recommend, this is specifically for our event photographers, clicking add text and put in file name short, setting the text color to be white, and then the uh, drop shadow to be black. And I have pretty good eyesight, so I typically set this to eight, but um, what this will do is by having that white text with a uh, black drop shadow, um, it, if somebody is wearing a white uh, white clothes, then you'll still be able to see it because of the drop shadow. But this is gonna make, a, uh, and you can even go smaller if you're able to read it. Um, but you can, uh, let's, uh, I'll show you. It's a four by six vertical. This makes it real easy to do reprints when somebody comes back and says, I need an extra copy. You know exactly how to find that image. Um, just a, another quick tip. You can use F2 and type in a file name and it'll bring it up. So this one's three, four or nine, four, three, five. There's a little bit of dyslexia. Um, F2. Nine four three five. I think I got it right. There we go. So, quick way to retrieve images and mark them so they're easy to find, and you just kind of hide it as small as you can make it. Um, so the next thing on our list is green screen. Um, before we get too far into green screen, I'm going to talk about. Um, high key and low key and what that does because it's in with green screen but it's, it's a little bit different so what high key um, I remember back when I was a kid we uh, we'd get our pictures taken they would have like a profile and another one in the top corner and they did that by kind of like sandwiching neg negatives together and exposing um, and that's kind of what's happening here if you have a image with a two images with a black background um, then you can use them together um, and the software comes with ones that are pretty close to white um, you'll see that not quite all the way there um, but if we go to our green screen templates um, 
just kind of how this works. If you're used to Photoshop, this would be similar to um, kind of like multiply. Um, it's a uh, it's uh, applying two images and, uh, and uh, a blending option. Now we're getting this line right down the center because these uh, two images um, are not quite all the way uh, high key. They're they're light, but uh, that it should be white as background and then for low key black. So that's those. Uh, we we do get questions about that every so often. Um, kind of an older style of photography coming from film days. Um, okay, so green screen, we have, I'm using this one specifically because it's a, it's a pretty, I mean, the idea behind it uh, is pretty neat. That it's a, a background image and then a photo image on top of it set to chroma key and then an overlay on top of that. The image is sandwiched in between those two. Um, so one thing I wanted to show you, because um, I think most people are kind of familiar with this uh, green screen in that um, method, um, we're going to switch back over to my templates. I'm going to create a new uh, four by six green screen list. And just for fun, we'll add vert to the end. Um, Four by six vertical, and I'm going to add a, a graphic. Oops, I'm not adding a graphic. I'm adding a graphic list. I'm going to click edit background. Add. I'm adding all of these. I'll increase it just a little bit so it takes up the whole area. Add photo, set to chroma key. And then um, I'm going to save it as a new border. So now when we go to our photo workshop, uh, go back to photo library, select green screen for the workshop. There's our green screen with a graphic list. Make sure we select a green screen image. We have this list right here. And we can flip through the different backgrounds. So this might be, uh, these can be different uh, studio backgrounds. They can be, if it's an event uh, studio or the event sponsors um, could have their step and repeat backgrounds. Uh, they, whatever, you can swap out and use these uh, lists and just be able to flip through um, a whole bunch of different backgrounds. The other thing I wanted to show you was the you have the option to um, I'm going to create an effect kind of winging this here so Kind of stick with me. Um, we'll use this guy right, or the, use that one right there. Okay, so I have this effect and it's black and I actually, let's see, I'm gonna go with one that's just a little bit cleaner lined. Um, Just so, yeah, this one right here. Just, uh, okay. So it's a, a little bit over the top, but this is gonna be the, this border. Um, and we have the color set to black. We can choose this option right here, um, and which allows us to change the color effect or the effect color. And I'm also gonna add some text so you can see that it can also be used with um, text. Um, let's say name, we'll make that quite a bit bigger. And this is just placeholder text. And 
and um, make it Arial Black so it's easy to see. Okay, so there's our, make sure that I did set that to be editable. You wanna check that option. Click OK and save as a, um, we'll just save over the existing template to save time. So we can toggle through our backgrounds. If I click T, um, we'll just type in my name um, and so I've lost that, that option that we didn't talk about yet, but edit color, uh, booth, uh, border color, I've picked it back up. I can now select from the image and for the text, I can do the same. Um, or I can choose from a color selector here. And so where this becomes real helpful is um, the uh, uh, kids sports. You can adjust the template specific to match the colors of their uniforms. So it's a little bit more cohesive. And the, um, the edit border and then graphic list instead of being a background maybe well this could be a, a background but it also can be an overlay um, for the different colors or maybe even their um, their logo for their team um, so you can swap out and it's uh, um, it's made specific for their team and makes it all come together just a little bit better um, so that's graphic lists and color editor. Um, and we have two more things to show. No, three more things. Okay, so we're gonna go back. We're gonna be working in green screen. We're gonna create a new template. This one's gonna be called, uh, we'll make it, um, an 8 by 12 12 template um, and there's a very specific reason why we're doing 8 by 12 we're going to set this option to be saved as transparent um, if saving as PNG we're going to add a graphic or not a graphic we're going to add a photo set it to chroma key and I chose 8 by 12 because it's a higher resolution now um, and what we're going to do is we're going to save our images out as images with transparency. Um, the important thing to remember, and I see this happen way too much, is that people will take a 20 megapixel graphic or image and then they'll try to run this through on a 40 by 60 so they can make a poster. There's no reason to go that high. Your, the software won't handle it. You, you're going to want to come back down to a reasonable size. But your actual image was smaller than your output, so you're just making a larger file at that point. But um, you will run into issues if you try doing 40 by 60. Uh, typically what I'd say is 24 by 36, maybe 100, uh, 150, 200 DPI is kind of the limit of what this can handle. And same thing for composites. We'll talk about composites uh, in just a moment. But so I have an 8 by 12. Um, this will make sense in just, in just a moment. So um, let's switch back over to that digital media product that we had earlier. Um, well, we'll create a brand new one. Save as PNG. We'll do quick print digital media. Sorry if I'm working a little bit fast, but this is kind of stuff that we've already covered. Um, and but right here, I must make sure I select PNG for the file type. 
and the location it's going to be on my desktop and we'll just call it PNG um, so now when we go into our photo library I can select I have only two images but I can select a hundred images click number four for package four because we use our keyboard because it saves time and if I go to uh, my desktop doo -doo -doo, look for a folder called So you guys might have seen something that I missed. I'm not sure what I missed yet, but I'm gonna create a folder called PNG. And go back and check my work. Oh, I saved it to my C drive rather than my desktop. Let's see if it's there. PNG, there it is. So those, those two images saved with transparency. Uh, this is helpful for kids sports again, but where I'm seeing this used a lot recently is uh, business portraits. People that uh, go to events, take business portraits, and then uh, give these um, for use on people's websites. So that is saving images to PNG with transparency. And I do have, most of this is covered on um, darkroomsupport.com, but I wanted to kind of go over some of these other things sometimes people miss. Um, we have composite photos. So, um, demo, new, we'll say 16 by 20 comp. And um, once again, this is one of the things I see people run into quite a bit, that um, they'll make these composites, and they take a long time to make sometimes, and then the, the, but they have the file size, you know, 40 by 60, 600 DPI, the software will not render that image. You'll have to go back in and do some, uh, rework some things. So um, let's see, we're gonna have, We'll say 12 and then, did I do that right? I probably meant to go the other way. I'm using my scroll wheel to make things a little bit smaller. Um, yeah, I did. Um, big size. We'll say, um, and this is the aspect ratio, so it's not the size. This will just say eight and that one ten. All vertical. And then just for fun, we'll put a predefined mass so we can actually see it a little bit better. What we're building. Um So you kind of see what's going on here. This might be used for a class, uh, for like a fraternity or a sorority. Um, you can um, add additional spacing because that's a little close together. And if um, we added a graphic. Earlier we talked about uh, allow it to overlap. In this situation, we're not we're going to have it skip those images. So this might be a team logo or uh, something along those lines. Um, and now it's skipping those images rather than overlapping. So that is building a composite um, using add multiple photos. And the last thing that we've kind of gotten into a little bit is a proof template. Um, I'm going to base it off of a 4x6 image. Um, and they're going to be vertical images so that 
template's gonna be horizontal. Add photo, and we're gonna say that they're two by two and a half by three and a half, a wallet size. And I am kind of winging this here, that's why it kind of sounds like I am. Uh, we'll go a little bit smaller, okay. Just a little bit wider. So we have one, and then we'll duplicate that, and um, change that to two. And we are going to add the file name, but because we have two different images, we can't just use uh, file name. So we're going to go with photo. Uh, let's start with percent photo one dot file percent, and we can go with the just normal Arial for for this. Set to black and no shadow. We'll go a little bit smaller. And uh, we want to make sure there's enough room for the whole file name. Copy, paste, take this guy, change it to photo two. That is what it is going to tell it to look at this photo for the file name. Uh, copy paste move that guy right down there change the font to some people might know where I'm going with this and I hope I do not have a I was hoping that I had code 309 you can use code 309 uh, as a barcode um, I have not loaded it since I've switched over to new computer. But if you had the, that font loaded, you could then apply the, the actual barcode there. Um, let me see, I think we um, add barcode. Now this, I'm not sure that it'll work. I, uh, I've i never personally tried that. Code three of nine. Um, photo two dot file percent percent and I'll be testing this out live so um, and this is actually the last thing I'll be showing you guys so if it fails uh, you can just use the font and I know that does work photo one I just don't know if I can use uh, special text in this area I have not uh, tried it I believe you can but I'm not positive um, add photo or add text we're going to add one more bit of text proof rotation is set to negative 15 white 15 50% and let's say once again I'm just kind of guessing the 70 way too big so we'll make that just a little bit smaller put that right there copy paste and move that guy over there and what we've made now is a proof template um, kind of try to get these all uh, centered center okay and save uh, four or six proof okay so uh, you can manually use that template. Instead, we are gonna go up to our proof option right here. Click uh, advanced options. I'm trying my best to keep it under one hour. We're coming close. Four by six custom. 
browse to our templates. What did I call it? Four by six proof. And um, we'll click and save it as a actual proof template four by six. And the difference there is it's going to save it into a different area. And um, now you can select that proof template from this area. We'll go ahead and print all. And uh, it's telling me I don't have a printer. We know that already. We'll go ahead and try that with these images right here. And um, print all. Okay. We go to our orders. I'm assuming. It's this one probably right here. So if you're using a barcode reader, this would print out a four by six. And uh, um, so you can, uh, if you have a smaller printer, you can do uh, smaller, cut them in half, hand these out, and then allow people to choose and decide whether they're gonna, they're gonna have, um, they're gonna purchase. This rather than being two up could have, uh, Purchase options, the pricing, um, contact information, those type of things. These are just give you a few ideas of what you can do and just how powerful your uh, packages and your templates are. Um, but I encourage you to play with it. Learn a little bit more. We have a little bit of downtime right now. Um, and that's pretty much it. I want to. Uh, thank you all for spending your time with us. We've been trying to give you this content and good. hopefully it's good stuff. Hopefully it's helping. Hopefully you're staying safe and healthy. Um, we're going to continue to try to bring you information, keep your spirits up, and make the best of a bad situation with this um, situation we're all currently in. Please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you next time.